This is Sandy. We are going to be doing hot air balloons in perspective today. We're going to need to have our tools, our ruler, our um, pencil, eraser, but we're also going to need crepons or oil pastels and we're going to need watercolors to finish it off. So we're sort of like the aquarium where we use the two to all three together. And notice I'm going to use, I'm going to leave white spaces on some of mine. And even though it's on a balloon, that's going to fill up with watercolor. So let's get going. Okay, let's get started. We're doing hot air balloons and we're going to try and do them in perspective. So this is a picture of a hot air balloon. Um, I belong to a website that you could use their pictures and recreate their pictures without somebody saying that you violated their copyright. So if you're looking for hot air balloons and you want to draw it, make sure that you're not violating somebody's copyright, which means you don't have a right to their pictures. Okay, let's talk about this. We are standing on the ground. We're at a hot air balloon liftoff. And what are we going to see? We're right next to this basket. And when we look straight up, we see the sky and we see the balloon. That's sort of like our floating boxes above the horizon. So I want you to see where we are before we try to draw these. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Now let's look at this picture. Hot air balloons. Where do you think our perspective is? I mean, obviously, we aren't on a hilltop. That's way too high for a hilltop. We aren't on a mountain. Yet the balloons are underneath us. So I would say we are in another balloon, taking a picture at the balloons lifting off. So on this one, I could draw our perspective Yeah, pretty much like that. But everything I see is going to be the tops of it. I'm not going to see any of the bottoms. So think about how we're drawing these. Now remember, I said we're standing on the ground and we're watching the balloons go up. Now, it's hard to get a perspective on these. These two we could get a perspective here and here that would tell you how much farther they are. Um, these two down here are kind of hard to get a perspective. But now I could do this one and this one and still keep things in perspective. I want to look at another thing while we're here. When we're looking at these baskets and the people in them, can you see the people in those baskets back there? Can you see the baskets? And you can't. It's too far away. Now here we can see the baskets, but it is really hard to see the cords that, that connect the balloon to the basket. So trying to put the cords in isn't very good either unless we're close enough to them. We have to figure out how close we are, what we're going to be seeing. Okay, this is the one I want to look at. We are down here, and we can have perspective and stay in perspective. We know that all of the balloons are about the same height, but how are we going to show one is farther away than the other? We know this one is farther away. because it's smaller. But if that one is farther away, then what are we going to see in the basket? Are we going to see 
the guy with the controller? Are we going to see the um, the outlining on the basket, the decorations on the basket? No, nope, we're not going to see that. We aren't going to see much of anything. And as these get further and further away, even though they're about the same um, altitude, there's different perspectives. The, our perspective is going to tell us who's the farthest away. Right now, it's telling me that's the farthest away, that's the second, that's the third, and that's the closest. So that's what I want to draw. But I want to keep everything in balance. I want the balloons to remain the same height and the, and the um, carts that people sit in. You will have these pictures um, along with the posting, so you'll be able to look at it. Okay, remember I said we are down here in the corner. And... Um, let's see, our horizon line, I'm not even going to worry about that because I'm going to make it very low. Very low. So I could go this side if I need a double one. I'm going to put it on here. I don't know if I will. I've got a double vanishing point here and here. Now we're standing here. And right where we're standing is a balloon. How are we going to draw that balloon? I think I'm just going to make the, the um, basket. Because I'm standing here and I'm holding on to the basket. I think I need to go up a little bit above the horizon line. Okay, I've got the front of my basket is now drawn. Now I've got to get the inside of my basket drawn. How am I going to do that? My ruler isn't quite long enough, but I'm going to make it seem like it is. Okay, so here's our basket. This balloon hasn't lifted off yet. We will be able to draw, probably it's laying on the ground behind us. So we aren't even gonna draw the balloon that is getting filled up. Okay, let's draw a balloon on the ground. So let's draw him right here, pretty much in the middle. And I'm just putting the basket in. I'm using my two different lines. Here we go, we've got our basket. Drawn in perspective. Just a square, isn't it? Two squares on top of each other. Okay, this balloon might be, let's see, if this was where we're at, I'd say this balloon right here is gonna be right up here and I'm just gonna make an X so I know how high my balloon goes. Do we know about ratios yet? A ratio is how much one thing is to another. What is the size of the balloon in comparison to the size of the basket? If the balloon, if the basket is a half an inch and the balloon is three and a half inches, what is the ratio? Three and a half inches to a half an inch. I only say that because when we make our balloons, and I probably need this to be four inches.
this is going to be the bottom of our balloon. And the bottom of the balloon is about the same width as our basket. Okay, it's going to come up a little bit. And then it's going to go out. I could be really careful and get this exactly right, but that isn't the lesson today. There's our balloon. It's being blown up, and the people are going to be standing in here getting ready to um, fly the balloon. And when the balloon blows up, it's got very it's got little um, things for the basket where you can hold on to it. We're going to put those in there. Okay, and we can put our people in there later. So we've got two people in the basket. We're going to be able to see the back where it's attached from maybe the center point of our balloon to the basket edges. We won't see what's behind us, but we will see what's in front of us. I went ahead and put the whole line in, now I'm erasing it. We won't see that part right there. Okay, they're getting ready to lift off. At this point, we can go ahead and we can make changes to any of this. But what I wanted to talk about is I've got my perspective here. And let's make this first one right here. We are going to see the bottom of the basket. Here's our first box. Here's our, we come up straight like that. We will never see the back of that basket because all we're seeing is the bottom and the sides. Didn't quite have that right. I'm going to go up one more on this side to make it look a little bit better. Okay, there's our basket. We see the bottom. Now, if this is basically one to four ratio, so if this is one, our balloon is going to have to probably end up to be right about there. And I'm just making an X so I know how and where the top of that balloon should go. Remember the bottom is here. And the top is going to be here. You can go bigger with these balloons or not. It's up to you. Okay, now let's stop, stop and think about what are we going to see down here. We're going to see inside that balloon blowing up. And how am I going to show you the inside of the balloon? I'm going to show it by making an ellipse. And that's, this has a, an opening that will go up. Okay. Let's draw another balloon. Let's put this one up here. He's pretty high up. Starting with my box, I'm 
and then we're going to talk about what I'm what we're going to see. Look at the size of the baskets. This one's pretty close to the ground stair still, and it's about the same size as this. Our boxes as they go up are going to get smaller and smaller because we're not seeing them anymore. And because of where we're standing, we are not going to see a lot of balloon anymore. Now, can you imagine somebody leaning out of this basket and waving at you? I can. It'd be up here. And the top of this balloon is going to be about four of these. So one, two, three, four, about right there. So I'm going to draw my arrow so I know, or my X, so I know exactly where my balloon top ends according to my perspective. I'm using these two perspective lines. Okay, there it is. And I'm just going to see a little bit of that. Okay, let's get a balloon way off over here in the corner. See if I can get this. All I'm going to see is a very small square. And I probably don't even have to use my perspective to get this one in here. Okay, I can manage on this one. And we're going to put him up right there. So we've got it coming here to here. Okay, so we could tell who's farthest away. I think this one right here needs to come down to have a bit bigger basket like that. So I've just made my basket a little bit larger. Okay, you should have at least four balloons. One, two, three, four. And they should be at different different uh, distances from us. There might be another one over here. And all we're going to see is the balloon. It's just showing you all the different things you can do with it. Now, balloons don't like to take off around trees. They don't like to take off around power lines. So there's really nothing here. This is an open field. Okay, let's talk about what we're going to do next. First of all, we have to um, decorate this. And if we want, we can actually put some cloth on the ground. Some balloon cloth that is laying over here. And it's going to come up. And it's going to be in here like that. See how uh, they unfolded it, and that'll be our balloon. That will tell us that this is going to be a balloon basket. I made square baskets. If you wanted to, you could come in using that square to make round baskets. This is advanced. And so I'm not sure you really want to do it. It's got to be the same ellipse as this up here. But that's how you get a round basket. 
Um, it might be a sunny day. It might be a cloudy day. They do not fly in the wind, so we can't make a windy day with things all flying around. Now what we're going to do. Now what we're going to do is use our cray paws and we're going to decorate these. Let's talk about colors that we choose. If it's far away, are we going to see a lot? I mean, the one sitting down here, this one right here is probably going to have all kinds of nice looking colors and maybe designs. And I'm just picking bright colors. But remember, this is all just heaps on the ground. So a lot of times there isn't going to be a lot of color definition here. I am going to show that, yeah, this is going to be a really colorful bloom when it goes up. You know, not all baskets are brown. They could be varied in color. And I'm going to do that, just vary it in color. But I'm going to follow my my perspective line. So these aren't going to be straight across colored. I'm going to follow this line right here. Right there. Remember that the stuff that I'm brushing off, it will get all over everything. So you've got to make sure and clean up after yourself. Okay, now I'm going to put them all together. So I'm tying my basket together. Maybe this is rope. Maybe it's extra basket leave stuff. Almost looks like brick, doesn't it? Your basket can look whatever way you want. Okay, I've got to get the rest of my balloon in here, and I'm going to put that as all red. Now, why am I using cray paws or oil pastels rather than crayons? Have any idea? Well, it's because when I finish this, I've got to draw the inside of my basket here. So I'm going to use black because I want it to be dark in there. When we finish this, we're going to, like we did our um, aquarium, we're going to use watercolor to finish it off. This is my balloon that isn't quite blown up. So I'm leaving it there. Now I'm going to move over to the ones that 
it is, but I'm going to go from the farthest away closest because I don't want to get my hand in it working on it the whole time. Okay, so here's, I'm going to go the farthest away, is this one right here, and I'm going to take a tissue and cover this up so that I'm not smearing it. Remember, think about what you're going to be able to see on this basket far away. Probably not a lot of detail at all. Just the blue colors. What do you think in the color of the basket you'll see? It's not going to be very dark. As it's so far away, remember the colors aren't as bright as they are as they get closer up. Okay, so we've got this one drawn in. Now, we've got to go with the next one. and That's probably this one over here. And I'm going to keep this light color on the basket. But maybe the bottom is something that we'll be able to see a little bit better. So I'm going to go a little bit darker on the bottom. Okay, I get a new color, and this time I'm going to do a three-color balloon. Notice when I'm coloring this, that I am following the same arc as the top of the balloon. Okay, I'm not going to see anything holding this balloon, and I'm not going to see any of the um, hot air going into it. So none of that is here. I'm not going to see the inside of the balloon. Okay, let's move on to this one right here. The basket will be starting to see a little more definition in that one. So maybe I want to go with a basket this way. I know I'll be able to see the bottom of that basket better. But I still don't think I'm going to see a lot of definition on this inside basket, on this basket outside. Okay, let's do something different on the balloon, and maybe we want to get some stripes this way. Why am I going this with a curve like that? Well, it's because once again, I am following the outside line of the balloon. And as I get to center, this is how I see it. I can see it curves, but the center line no longer looks straight, no longer looks curved, it's picked up that straight part of it. Okay, let's get some blue in there. Now you can use your crayons and paint watercolor on top of it, but unless you press really hard, it's not going to work real well. Okay, 
Now we are going to see the inside of that balloon. Maybe the inside is just, it's going to have some of these like that in it. And then maybe it, the colors aren't going to be as brilliant on the inside. I'm going to make sure I'm going to make sure that I've got a good bottom on this. Oh, I do. All right, let's move on to our next balloon. It's right here. We still aren't going to see people. It's still too far away. Well, if we see it, we might see the tops of their heads. So I'm not going to bother putting it in. All right, I'm going to put in, I know I'm going to put in some zigzags. Now you might ask yourself, why doesn't the watercolor go into the um, the crepas. Let's think about our salad dressing. One is oil and one is vinegar. And when you mix the salad dressing together, what happens? They separate because oil or water and Water and oil do not mix. One, the water will sit on top of anything that's an oil. Remember what we what the other name of these crayons are? The crepas? Oil pastels. So water is not going to affect it. I'm even leaving some white in here, some plain, plain old paper. I'm going to give it a nice firm color here. What am I going to see on the back of that? Probably a grayer color. So I'm going to put gray. That's the inside of that balloon. It's kind of grayish. Okay, let's do our basket. I'm going to see more definition. I might see it's striped. And the bottom is going to be lighter. I can make it any way I want, just to make it look a little bit different. Keep turning is trying to find an edge. Okay, I've got one more to go. Now this one you might see a line that would connect. And the pencil will draw right over it. Okay, this is the one that's on the ground and I want to make sure I get all of my markings off of here. I'm not going to see what's underneath that. However, I might see that it isn't a circle, that it isn't square. It might be a circle like that. Now, if I made the circle that way, then I would be seeing something. But because I made it curve towards me, I won't be. Okay, I am going to go with a nice orange stripe. Following the same line. 
as the balloon. I don't want a straight line. And I think I'll go with this one again. You can become your balloon designers. All of these balloons are made from silk. But somebody designs that fabric. Maybe he'll grow up to be a balloon designer or a silk designer. Okay, I'm just moving that off of there. I don't want it on there. And then I'm going to go with a darker blue. When I do this for you, I do it very quickly. If I were taking my time and doing it, I would be so much happier with what it's going to turn out like. So think about that. You think about taking your time and really putting the effort into making this beautiful, and you'll have something worth hanging on your wall. Have you picked up my pattern yet? Can you see the pattern in here? I was symmetrical. I did the same thing on the top as the bottom, and I left that as my middle. Okay, putting in the bottom of my balloon now. And I'm going to make my basket. Oh, I think I'll go with two different browns. And I'm going to give one of my drivers a blue shirt. He's going to hold on to here. And I'm going to give my other driver 
a writer, whatever you want to say, a fun shirt, and they're going to hold on like that. And I'm probably just going to take my pencil and put in some hair. And because I am going to paint on top of this, if I put green down, they're going to have a green face. So I've got to get some color or white in their face area. And I've got to give them that bar to hold on to. And we are going to be able to see ropes, but it's not going to be very dark. So this could come up on this side, and this one here could come up on this side. This one here could go up here, and that one there could go up in the back. And I just drew it in the front. Okay. Are you ready to put the watercolor on here? I'll get rid of all of these shavings because you know that water is not going to stick on top of this. Okay, now you've got your water coat. Your crepas could be put away, and anything that can get can't get wet should be put away. So my iPad is gone. I've got some watercolors here. I'm going to use just blue. Nothing fancy about it. Now, we're going to, this is just regular paper, so it's, it isn't as good as if we were doing it on a watercolor paper. So I've got to be careful how much paint or how much water I do get here. So I don't want a whole bunch of water. And I can put clouds in the sky. I don't have to color everything. And I could just go over like that. I'm not holding very much onto this brush. Just the very tip, so I'm really not painting a lot. Going right on top of all of my balloons. Don't have to worry about getting under them. But what happens when you get down to the bottom and you know that there was no sky there? We've got to put our grass in. One nice thing that will happen, i got too much paint in that. When we put our grass in, anywhere it touches something wet, it's going to bleed into it. So this, this is going to work its way up into looking like maybe there is a, some trees in the background. I really think when you do this, you need to consider doing it on a piece of watercolor paper because what, what's coming out here, it's frameable. Something you guys can put on your wall and say, I did that. Okay, we'll see you next time.